Uh, Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. See what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skind is suing Lumen Abner for a thousand dollars for alleged injuries he received when he fell in a theater last week. Yesterday, the old fellows tried to settle out of court, but Squire's terms were a third interest in the mastership of their theater, which they promptly turned out. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Downstore Library helping Lum prepare for some kind of a trip. <laughs> well, Lum, why can't you just call in at the county seat and horse a lawyer? What do you have to make a trip all the way in there for? Well, of course, it's easier to tell this kind of stuff to a fellow direct than to try to tell him over the long-distance telephone. Why? Well, I don't know. You can just talk to him better. I get excited when I get on the telephone. I'm afraid I'll get things mixed up. He yeah. might not understand who's suing who. Uh-huh. Well, we could squire Sue, uh, or squire Sue, now listen to that, ain't that awful? Well, see, you thought you were talking on the telephone. Yeah, yeah, I believe I must talk better on the phone than I do just sitting in a room this way. I believe I'll call a lawyer. No, you better let me handle that. Well, if we got mixed up, Lum, and sued squire, that's what I meant to say when I said squire and sue. I guess that ain't a bad idea. No, if we could sue squire me, we'd get a thousand dollars. Why don't we sue him for a thousand dollars? I don't think that's a good idea. What do we sue him for? Well, that's the trouble. Uh, I can't think of nothing. Let's see. Let me think now. You better let me go in there and talk to the lawyer. I want to look him over pretty good before I hire him anyway. Well, Dick Huddleston gave him a good recommend, didn't he, Lum? Yeah, but I want to see him personally. I'm a pretty good judge of humans. I can tell right off if he's a good, honest lawyer or not. Oh. I'll use psychology on him to test him out. Uh Uh-oh. Besides being justice of the peace, I know a lot of them legal terms. Yeah. I can tell by talking to him if he knows what he's talking about or not. You get in there and start to talking law matters with him, Lum, and get to trying to use that psychology. Why, we're just the same as lost a case right now, I'll tell you that. I wish you'd quit being so skeptical about everything I do. Well, I still think you could just phone in there and save yourself this trip and time. I'll have to stay here at the store all by myself. Well, it ain't safe phoning this kind of stuff. Safe? The squad more than likely be listening just sure as the world over the party line. Oh, yeah, doggy, that's right. I forgot about the party line. Besides, yeah. I've already arranged to borrow Cedric's car for the trip. I wonder what's keeping him now. He said he'd be here at that car at 2 o'clock sharp. Look at it. After 2 o'clock now. Well, maybe he made a mistake and drove right into the county seat. You know how Cedric gets things mixed up, Long. Yeah, maybe I better call over to his place. Well, ain't he over at Frank Forster's filling station? He told me that. Said he's getting a car all oiled and all that. Oh, yeah, that's right. He did say that. Yeah, what's that ring over there? Uh, two longs and a short, please, it is. Yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, two shorts and a long one. I can't reach it. Two longs and a short, I think. Well, are you sure now you can drive good enough to drive Cedric's car in there, Lom? Why, of course I can. Hello? Is that you, Frank? I hate to ride in there with him. This is Lom. Is Cedric there, Frank? Get to thinking about something else, take right off through the woods. Oh, I see. Ah. Yeah, well, much obliged, Frank. Good horse. Good luck. That horse will bring him home. He's on his way over here now. Frank is? No, Cedric. Oh, I was wondering what Frank was coming over there for. <laughs> Frank said Cedric's been sort of overhauling the car. Overhauling? Yeah, that's the reason he's late. Getting it in good condition for me. Oh. Good for him. Well, now, are you sure you ought to try to drive that thing long? Of course I can. I've drove a car before. Don't you recollect I had one myself once? Had that Saxon. Oh, yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Saved up soap roppers or something like that for it, didn't you? I never done no such a thing. I had to sell so many bars of soap to get it. Yeah, well, I know there's something like that. I know you got it with soap somewhere. I never kept it long. Swapped it off for a young span of mules, recollect? Yeah. Okay. But I've rode in a lot of cars. Used to ride around with Ezra's feet trunk in that old E.M. and F. of his. Yeah. Granny there with a like car. <laughs> Drank it on the side. Yeah, that was a fancy one, it sure was. Of course, I recollect them straps that held the top down in front there. It all is breaking loose. And that wait, pop wait, wait. Would fly right Cedric through. now. Huh? 
Where about is my hand satchel at? Well, you said on the counter. Uh, no, no, there it is, right away on the floor, right there by the pickle barrel. Oh, yeah. Well, how long you aiming on being gone, Mom? Oh, just a day or so. I might have to stay overnight. Well, you will if you stay a day or so, I believe. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, you'll have I to. I want to be there long enough to get our case all planned out with this lawyer. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get it all figured out. Yeah, with you the... say, well... yeah howdy, Cedric. You got the car all fixed? Yes, Mom. Got it all oiled and a spark plug scraped and a bunch of other junk done on it. Told you, you sure fixed it up, didn't you? Yes, well, <laughs> good. Well, I reckon I better be going then if I expect to get there today. Yeah, yeah, it's getting late. Well, Mom. before you leave, I better run over to see Mr. Ezra Seastrunk for a minute. No, I ain't got time to wait for that, Cedric. I'm late getting started now. Yeah, you can go see Ezra after Lama's went, Cedric. Well, I ought to go right now, though. Huh? No, you'll have to do that later, Cedric. Yeah, see, Lama's got to get in there at the county seat and see this lawyer fella that Dick Huddleston told us about. Well, what do you want a lawyer for? For the trial that's coming up. Squire Skimp's law suing us for a thousand dollar damage. Claimed he hurt himself when he fell down on a picture show the other night. Well, I thought you told me you fellas was going to settle that outside of the courthouse or something like that. Well, we was aiming on it, Cedric, but never done no good. Settle it out of court, you mean, Cedric? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. No, Squire said he'd drop the charges if we'd give him a third interest in our picture show, but I reckon we ain't going to do that. I know. No, sir. Of course, I reckon he'll get a third interest anyway before we get done with this. Because we ain't going to be able to raise that thousand dollars he's going to win from us at the trial on. Is he sure enough going to win that from you? Why, he's bound to. See, me and Lum wrote him a note to cheer him up, and we said in it that it was all our fault that he fell down. And I wish you wouldn't tell that around. Huh? It just makes us look so silly. I get embarrassed to death over it. Silly? Yeah, very odd. These two grown men ought to have more sense than to do something like that. Well, all we was trying to do was uh, get Let's chilling. not talk about it no more. Uh-huh. Besides, i got to get started here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might know some way out of this some way. Well, uh, wait a minute. Lum, now, don't you think Cedric ought to go along with you and do the driving for you now? No, Cedric can't leave. Besides, I'll get along all right. Just tell me, uh, tell me how to start it again, Cedric. I'm all right from there yeah, on. You better tell him that again, Cedric. Yes, Mom. Well, it's just like any other car. You just sit in it and see that it ain't in gear first. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and then you turn the switch. But which way do you turn the switch? Well, you can turn it any way you want to. Anyway? <laughs> yes, Mom. See, it don't work no more. Huh? Well, see, what you have to do is to turn a thing that says lights on it. Well, don't that make the lights go on? No more. Oh. Well, how do you turn the lights on then, Cedric? Oh, you just go around to the front of the car and swap each light a good one. <laughs> they go on, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that is a stunt. Well, how do you turn them off then? Oh, you just put the brakes on good and hard. Put the brakes on? That's, yeah, just like any other car. Uh-huh. Well, let's see now. After I turn the engine switch on by turning the thing that says lights, then what I do? Step on the starter? <laughs> you can if you want to. Well, you have to step on it, don't you, Cedric? No, Mom, I never do. See, it's broke. Broke? Yes, Mom. Well, how do you start the car, then? Well, um, best way, I, I ought to stop on the side of the hill. Side of the hill, you just coast and get it started that way. Oh, sure. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, but what if there ain't no hill where I want to stop at? Why, just drive around till you find a hill, Long. Ain't that the way you do it, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Yeah. Yeah, but what if the hill's a long ways away from where I want to go? Well, no, me, that won't bother you. As long as you got the car, you can just drive over there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then you just drive back to the hill and stop. Uh, okay, wait a minute here. I, I don't believe that's going to work out right, though. I'm mixed Cedric, up are you something. sure you couldn't get a day off and come along with me? No, Mom, Mr. Bates won't let me off. I done spoke to him. Oh, uh-huh. You'll get along all right, though, Mr. Lum, if you'll just let me run over and see Mr. Seastrunk for a minute first. Don't no, now, Cedric. Lum told you there ain't time for that now. He's in a hurry. Well, I ought to go over there. Well, though. you can wait now. Well, you, you can, can do wait. that later. Well, I reckon I better get started. Yeah, yeah, you better, Lum. Here, wait a minute. I'll get your hand satchel for you. You don't want to forget that. Just take me a second to go and see Mr. Seastrunk and Cedric, pick my... Cedric, stop bothering Lum about that now. He told you once he ain't got time to wait for you. Uh, here's your satchel, Lum. Yeah, thank you, Abner. Yeah. Well, I reckon this is goodbye. Cedric, would you mind coming out and help me start the car? Yeah, go help me start it, Cedric. Oh, I, I left the motor running for you, Mr. Lum. 
Oh, well, good. Well, yeah. uh, Long, now, you, you be sure and tell that lawyer what a snake in the weeds that squire skimp is, and tell him that you don't believe he's actual hurt and he's just trying to beat us out of a thousand dollars. I know what to tell him, Abner. Well, I just want to remind you some things to tell him. Well, now, if you want to handle this, maybe you better go in there. I never said nothing about handling it. I never made, uh, wanted to make you mad. I'm just trying to remind well, you. Well, I sat there and made a list of everything I'm going to tell him. So All right. Be sure and take the list with you, then. Oh, wait, Mr. Long. Here's some pieces of grape baskets. Pieces of grape baskets? I don't want no junk like that, Ted. Well, I know. Yes, you do. They, they help you stop the car. Huh? Well, you see, the brake, the brake bands is might not wore out, and it helps some to stick some of these thin pieces of wood in the brake drums there. Works pretty good till, till they fall out. Oh, well, you better take them along then, Long. All right, give them here. Yep, so long, Cedric. So long, Abner. Yeah, have a nice trip, Long, and, and get our case all fixed up good for us now. Yeah, I will. Goodbye. Yeah, so long. <clears throat> oh, good, I hope he gets along all right. I'm sure glad you had that car all over hole and put in such good condition for him, Sandy. Yes, Mom. I still order went to see Mr. Seastrunk, so. Well, don't worry. Uh, don't just look at him go, Sandy. Look out there. <laughs> that lummy sure making that thing jump like a jackrabbit. Well, he'll you know? run good now. Of course, nearly all them cylinders is running now. Well, uh, don't just he sure tore out of here. If he keeps that up, he's going to make a fast trip in there to the county seat, I'll tell him that. Well, he can make a, a lot longer trip out of it, though, if he'd have let me go see Mr. Seastrunk. Cedric, what do you want to bother Ezra for? You know how busy he is since they made him head of that racing board. Well, that's what I wanted to see him about. Huh? I wanted to pick up my new gas book so as I could put some gas in the car for Mr. Lum. <laughs> there ain't but a half a gallon in it now. Mm -hmm.